thank you for listening to this show that we've been playing this last year and a half. Uh, we have a very special guest with us tonight, Sanatam Kaur. And she also has brought her family and friends to be with her. She, she's going to introduce them for us. And so good evening, Sanatam Kaur, and how are you? Good evening, David. I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you so much for having us. I'm, I'm joined by my beloved mother, Prabhu Namkar, and Hargobind Singh, who will be playing tabla with us, and Siddhi Kartar Singh on the guitar. And uh, we're here to, to chant and to be with you and this, this time dedicated to healing. Well, th thank you very much. And... Um what we're doing here on these uh, our traditional healers forums is that we're bringing in traditional healers from around the world and different traditions. And uh, so this is sort of our uh, first adventure in that direction this year. And we're going to be expanding upon that. And so that, you know, if uh, there is a traditional healer out there in our community that would like to be on this show, you know, please uh, phone in, send me an email, and would be love to share your wisdom. Um, we're going to start this show with an opening prayer. We always start our traditional healers' forums with an opening prayer. And so let us begin on this lovely hour and a half show with uh, our special guests. May there be a healing for all of you. Ancient ones, ancestors, spirits of the other world, we ask you to come be here with us. The wisdom keepers, the teachers, the healers, the visionaries, the dream keepers, come, we're here. We ask you to bring your presence so that we can better ourselves, each one of us individually. We ask you to help us so that we can be with our families in that good way. We ask you to come so that we can build our communities again. We know that there are some out there tonight that living on the street, maybe not a roof over their head, we ask you, ancient ones, to find them a room, find them a place, give them some comfort. We know that there's some out there that maybe didn't have enough food to feed their children with. And we ask you, ancient ones, to come and provide some nourishment for these families that are in need. And we know that there's some of you out there that are suffering maybe from a disease, maybe a sickness of the body. We ask those ancient healers to come and provide some healing salve on those wounds of yours. And we know that some of you have lost a loved one. And we want those ancient ones, those wisdom keepers to come and give some comfort to your soul. With that, we're going to ask all of you to come together tonight as one people, with one mind, with one heart, as we venture into this ancient Sikh tradition of chanting, yoga, meditation, so that we can all walk out of here tonight when the show's over feeling better than when the show started. So shall it be in our minds. Thank you. So we have Sanatam Kaur here. She's toured the world, sharing chants from the Sikh tradition through concerts and workshops. Her CDs have topped the New Age music charts since 2004. As a certified Kundalini Yoga instructor, Sanatam Kaur incorporates the practice of sacred chant, yoga, and meditation in her teaching given people daily tools and self-empowerment to experience deep healing and transformation. My goodness, what a pleasure, Sanatam. <laughs> yes, it was a miracle that got us here. <laughs> yes, and there were some miracles tonight, weren't there? <laughs> yeah, quite a few here at KPFA. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, there might be some people out there who would like to know a little bit about you and your past and... 
uh, in particular the the Sikh tradition this, that you your practice. Uh, t- when did when did this healing journey of yours begin? Well, this uh, this journey for me began when I was born. <laughs> I was born into this way of life in uh, 1969. um, A man by the name of Yogi Bhajan came from India uh, and started helping people to get off of drugs through the practice of Kundalini Yoga and meditation. And um, people that wanted to open their hearts and wanted to experience higher consciousness, but the drugs weren't working for them. And he gave... Um, the technology of kundalini yoga and meditation and lifestyle um, for people and and really literally saved thousands of lives. And so many people back in the 60s got inspired um, to study with him, including my parents. And not only did he teach about yoga and meditation, but he also taught about the Sikh way of life. And my parents were among those that embrace that way of life as well. So I was really born into all of this in Colorado. The Sikh tradition itself comes from Northern India. Um, But I grew up with the music and the tradition of the Sikh way of life uh, and connection uh, with the sacred path, which was a miracle really, um, and a blessing. And it's because of the work of Yogi Bhajan and uh, yeah, he he left his body just recently in 2004, but um, left a legacy of teachings, Kundalini Yoga, for people of all walks of life. And that's really the tradition and the lineage that I serve and, you know, have the blessing to to uh, continue to teach wh- what he shared with people. And the your, the, your Sikh practice, uh, for some of us who don't know what that is, what it looks like. Could you share just a little bit about uh, your practice? Yeah, I. Um, it's a journey for me. Seek itself means one who continuously learns. Um, and the Seek way of life began in the 15th century with a saint uh, named Guru Nanak. And he came at a time when the caste system was really strong in India and also the ruling Mughal Empire was very aggressively trying to convert people to uh, their religion. And so this intense time of, of injustice and tyranny. And he came and began a new way of life where there was no caste system, where there was, um, where all walks of life um, were accepted. And this is the, the basic foundation, Ik Onkar, God is one and the creator of all uh, in the Sikh way of life. And he taught through poems and songs. And as he traveled um, on foot through village after village after village, his teachings and his energy were retained in the hearts through his poems and poetry. And these poems were collected and then he, he was followed by nine additional gurus or masters. He was Guru Nanak and then followed by nine additional masters who also contributed poems and sacred writings as well. And then finally the 10th master, when, it was, when he was leaving his body, instead of appointing a human successor, he gave the guruship to this collection of writings of the previous gurus, um, in addition to other saints of the time. And so the, the core Sikh practice is really to recite these sacred words. And as a musician, that's the, the core of my music as well, to um, recite these words. And the words themselves have a very potent healing um, energy to them. They were um, originally recited uh, in that journey of human consciousness merging with universal consciousness. And so as we chant them, we also traverse the same pathways and have that opening of universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand also that there's a, a real uh, equality of men and women in, in the Sikh tradition. Yes. 
Uh, definitely in the in the history, in the traditional history. In modern day, we, as many people do, we still struggle with that. But in in our history itself, there are many Sikh women uh, who played an important role. Um, uh, Bibi Bani, the the wife of the fourth Guru of the Sikhs, uh, was incredible in her capacity to serve uh, her husband, who was the Guru, and 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 give birth to the fifth Guru to to raise a child of God, and um, so woman as a, an integral part of the family, um, bringing consciousness through her work as mother, as daughter, as granddaughter um she gave this incredible example of that as well and we also have a a woman Sikh warrior named my bago who actually fought and that's another part of the Sikh way of life that i didn't mention before is that we're warriors as well we have um uh, in our history had to stand up for religious freedom not only for the Sikh way of life but for the people of many walks of life in the region in india at that time um, so we have a martial art of, of the swords and my Bago was this incredible woman warrior who, who led, uh, who led armies into the battlefield. So. Ancient activists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful. Good examples. Very, sure. very engaged in the community. Yes. Yeah. The, the Sikh way of life, we, uh, when we gather um, we chant together and sing and 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 um, and then we always eat. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great, great practice. It's a great. Mm-hmm. Um, I've grown up with this um, f- meal sharing. And at the Golden Temple itself, which is the most sacred uh, Sikh temple, there's over ten thousand people served every day. Of every walk of life, so this is this idea of free food, and and the food is is open to it's free and an offering for anyone to come after after we've uh, had our spiritual experience together. And so. also, the other thing that I've always admired is uh, your sense of community, and but more than that, also family. Mm-hmm. Very, very family oriented. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the um, Yogi Bhajan really put in a lot of energy to, as he taught Kundalini Yoga and meditation, to giving um, teachings for children, mm. children's yoga, teachings mm-hmm. for women, teachings for uh, couples to um, uh, have a more uplifted relationship. Um, the idea of family um, on a spiritual path, um, Mm. is actually a doorway to liberation. Mm. Um, there is of course meditating on your own and, um, living a celibate life and, and, um, living that way. And so in the Sikh way of life, we, we have family, we have, um, this uh, but we incorporate our spiritual life into all of that. And so, yes, you know, I, um, as a mother myself, I went through some of my most um, incredible and deep and transformational spiritual experiences as a mother mm-hmm. and learned so much from that and um, feel so grateful um, to have that experience of of children bringing light into your life as well the when i was in my 30s uh, early 30s uh, i lived in a buddhist temple in japan uh, under the tutelage of nichidatsu fuji uh, who was an uh, one of the great leaders with mahatma gandhi during the revolution there and uh, so that in living with the monks in, in the temples Uh, Guruji always said that uh, our place isn't in the temple, it's out in the streets helping the people. And so I always admired him for that because it was was such social consciousness in in a spiritual base. And it seems like spirituality in our traditional cultures is really the the the, the center stone 
for all all that follows that. And so your spiritual practice as a Sikh, what do, what does that look like? I know in the temple in Japan, uh, much to my sleepy eyes, we had to get up at four in the morning and <laughs> we'd be chanting for two hours. And it was a chant, which is somewhat similar to yours. In the Buddhism, there's chanting, which is more of a yang or fire kind of energy. And then there's more of the Zen, which is more of a sitting, quiet context contemplative what we say in uh, the Chinese medicine more yin mm -hmm. and so that you have this chanting and then we have the two hours of chanting at the uh, at night from five to seven so in a day's time I you know there's four hours of chanting and I'm just wondering in your practice what does what does your spiritual practice look like well, yeah, we start at four o'clock in the morning aye, too, aye. <laughs> and a nice cold shower. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> we just got our cold shower fixed in our house, and I'm elated. I love it, and, um, and we do um, uh, recitations um, and um, also yoga and. And then chanting as well mm -hmm. with music, mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, you know throughout the day I, I put on a turban. If anybody's seen me, I wear a turban, and uh, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is to take that that spiritual awakening of the morning. It's an incredible experience to chant this way, as I'm sure you've experienced. Mm -hmm. To take that um, awakening. Uh, and then bring it into your day and remember as you look in the mirror, you say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person here. And mm -hmm. Yogi Bhajan, my teacher, said a beautiful thing. He said, we're not human beings here to have a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings here to have a human experience. Oh, wonderful. And, yeah, and our, um, our day is much like that. You know, go, going to work, all of those things. We also do special prayers as well uh, mm -hmm. when the sun set so as the sun rises and the sun sets um mm -hmm. our our teachers said in the most powerful times to meditate and transform your consciousness and and then in my family at home we do um our prayers uh, just as we're going to bed to let go of the dramas and traumas of the days so you can heal yourself and relax into into a peaceful mm -hmm. sleep you know in, in listening to you sanatam the thing that really catches my ear, and again, I've had the privilege to study with healers from around the world, and every tradition that I've come in contact with talks about the sunrise and the sunset. Mm -hmm. And those, and, and some of the teachings, they also say at high noon, those three times. But the sunrise and the sunset, those two powerful times of the day that somehow uh here in our modern culture i you know what what what's happening you know why have uh the masses abandoned that which has been passed down through the thousands of years as the two most important times of day and why have we been so accepting to let that go mm -hmm. and maybe find us in the dilemma that we're in today mm -hmm. And so with that, I think uh, uh, let's move forward. And I, I think that maybe you're going to want to share a chant with us tonight or maybe a few. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is David Kukla uh, at KPFA on the traditional healers from the four corners of the world. And uh, our special guest, Sonatam Carr, uh, she's with us and uh, she's going to be singing some uh, or chanting here throughout the, throughout the show. And at some point in time, she's also going to be teaching a chant to all of us, uh, those willing. And so with that, uh, here's Sonatam Kaur. Ek 
satnam karta purak nirbo nirvel akha with the traditional healers from the four corners of the world here at the Mothership here in Berkeley, California, KPFA. I want to thank all of you, the listeners out there who have been sponsoring this program and this radio station over the years so that we can bring you these kind of programs. And so we're going to continue on now. And I uh, also want to remind all of you that this is a live show and that uh, we are taking call-ins. Uh, the phone number is 510-848-4425. So that uh, if any of you uh, have a comment or a question you'd like to ask uh, me or Sanatam Kaur about uh, your journey, your healing practice, uh, if we can be of any help, that's why we're here tonight. And so uh, 510-848-4425, if you call in, they'll hold you on the line. And towards the end of the show, uh, we'll be taking those telephone calls. And so uh, we talked just a little bit earlier tonight about the, the Sikh tradition. And Sanatram was sharing with us some of their practices. And um, I think that the direction I'd like to go is just chanting and for some people they have no idea they hear it um, I know, you know a lot of repetition 
what is this chanting all about? Why, uh, what is its medicine? Uh, another question, how does it heal? Mm. If we can maybe, let's venture in that direction maybe for the next 15 minutes. And I know I don't have all the answers and I'm not going to assume that you do either. But why don't we talk about chanting and the importance of it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a life journey for me to understand the power of chanting. And, you know, at night, uh, before I go to bed, I chant. And I just chant until the energy clears, you know, and I just do it. And it works. It works every time. And it's a beautiful experience. Um, But I didn't really understand the power of chanting until, until I started to really, you know, get it out there and teach and through the music uh, that we've created, uh, the chanting kind of got out there to people that maybe wouldn't normally walk into a yoga class, let's say, you know. So um, I had this one experience that I want to share. Uh, tonight, I got a letter uh, in the email. Uh, this was a couple years ago, but it really illustrated to me the power of chanting. Uh, this woman's husband uh, had gone to Iraq and and he had come back and had been through drama and trauma and and um what he couldn't he couldn't cry he he couldn't talk about it he was just locked up and and she was she was in a mess about it and somehow somebody had given her our music and gave her this chant which i'm going to teach in a little bit in this program um ramadasa gave her the music for that and she'd been listening to it and, and, and had experienced some healing within her and somehow got her husband to listen to it. And for the first time, uh, he just listened to it for a few minutes and for the first time he was able to cry. He was able to cry in that moment. And, um, you know, chanting... Uh, the words that we're chanting are, are sacred vibrations that essentially are positive affirmations of the light within you, of, the, of your capacity to be loving, of your capacity to be kind, of your capacity to be courageous because the divine is within you and the divine is you. And that's what these chants do. And they bring that energy. And, you know, we... It's a, they're mantras, we call them mantra. Man is mind and tra is the projection. And a lot of people say mantra. And then we, mantra is the way to say it. And, you know, in our minds, we, we have a lot of, we have a lot of mantras going on, you know, repetitions of thought patterns, really. And, and, and a lot of them are damaging and, and discouraging and, and, and disempowering. I, I can't, I'm, I'm not worthy of this. I can't do that. I, I, you know, I deserve what I'm getting or, you know, these kind of repetitive negative pattern thoughts. So mantra is really just filling your mind with positive affirmations that yes i deserve happiness yes i deserve light i deserve love and what happens is that even if you don't consciously um know it you're beginning to replace those energy patterns in your mind and you're beginning to attract love you're beginning to attract light you're beginning to maneuver your life and live in such a way that you're you really are light. You really are love. And, and it starts within the mind. And that's the, the, the place where these mantras um, do a lot of their work. But it, it's also about heart and body and, mm-hmm. and, and just connecting with your spirit as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, I've always said that if we could only understand that words have the power to heal and they also have the power to kill. Mm-hmm. And so it's... It's sort of that uh, f- for those little ones out there. Uh, I want to be talking to the my little grandchildren right now to be careful with those words that you say to you know your brother. Mm-hmm. Say be careful with those words that you say to your uh, sister, and because those words, there's energy in those words. There's power in them. And what I heard you saying, Sonatum, is to 
look at the thought that precedes the word. Mm -hmm. And so the, the mantra is the thought that precedes the word and that in these repetitions of these what we call sacred words, I'll use that word, these sacred words within yourself, that there's some medicine in there. Yeah. Hidden medicine. Exactly. But proven. Yeah. It works. Empirical proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works like a clockwork. Like it works amazingly. I done, I've done concert after concert in so many different places, and I see mm -hmm. people come in. What is this music? Their arms crossed or stressed out. And, you know, just you know, and and halfway through, the body posture shifts. There's a relaxation. Mm -hmm. The end. By the end, it's like. Wow, I feel so much joy and happiness. And you just see it mm -hmm. happen with the power of these mantras that people are right. chanting. It's a beautiful experience. Yeah. I talk about who is it that you're going to feed? Are you going to feed, you know, that good one that lives inside you? Or are you going to feed the bad one? Yeah. And in that practice... Uh, and seeing my clients over the years, those that are stuck in some really dark times and some maybe a lot of negative thoughts and um, just destructive and life is never good. Mm -hmm. And there comes a point I tell them that as and they keep wondering when's the good going to come. Mm -hmm. It's almost an entitlement. And maybe when we begin to realize that you earn the grace of God versus uh, just be given to. Maybe we become so spoiled that maybe the word discipline comes in, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit later in the program, about what you're talking about is a discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, disciplining yourself, again, empowering yourself to say that I can create whatever I want to create here, how I want to be here. And I want to remind everybody, this isn't about creating money. This is about something a little more sacred than that. This is something that lives inside of you, your heart. And that what we're doing here tonight is we're talking about finding a way and giving you some tools. I say putting in your sacred toolbox so that you can walk this Mother Earth. You can walk this land that we live on that's been uh, so ravaged by people with, I say, blinders on. And that we need to change that. And I'm so tickled to have you here tonight to bring your gift and all of you to, to just, I can just feel it in the room here. It's just beautiful. And so uh, we're going to want to move into the part of, you talk about healing transformations. I remember when we had lunch together, you said that was really an important thing for you. And so I w I'd like to bring that up and maybe you can explain to us uh, healing transformations. Yeah, the um, these chants, you know, you don't you don't have to really have life figured out <laughs> um, to begin chanting these chants. Um, and and uh, you know it's um, sometimes it really it really does take kind of getting to rock bottom mm -hmm. to have uh, the transformation and and I see a, a lot of a lot of my friends and in my own personal life the times that that I've had those major transitions or major transformations or when things really kind of squeeze you and challenge you. My teacher used to say, um, Yogi Bhajan used to say, a diamond is created from the highest pressure of on on the on the coal on the on that that coal, you know, and from coal can be created a diamond. So it's that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, that really creates it. Intensity. The intensity of it. Uh -huh. And you know, you asked me when did when did my healing journey start and and transformation? Well you know, of course, I was born into this path, but it also came when when my my parents, um, at, when I was at the age of eight, got a divorce, and it was a it was a dark time for our family, mm -hmm. and and really, um, you know, through uh, the grace of the divine, the grace of um, uh, 
my mother, I was able to really understand the power of these chants and begin to chant them every night. Um, and, and that's, that's when my spiritual awakening began, um, was through those, through those dark times. So I really want to say to anyone out there that, um, if you're having one of those dark times or the days that those come, um, instead of perhaps saying, oh, you know, why me? And this is terrible. Um, the, these are the times when the greatest, the greatest gifts come. If you, you know, allow yourself to go deep enough and really believe that uh, happiness is a possibility, that healing is a possibility. Um, that's when, that's when these chants really work. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was uh, living in the, again, the temple in Japan, uh, Guruji had a chant. And I know when people first came into the temple, they'd always ask for, well, what does the chant mean? It's like, you know, please translate it. And he would always say, uh, it's in the experience. If you want to know what it means, chant it and it will show you its meaning. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of times that uh, people have no idea what they're chanting, the meaning of it, and they're just chanting and belting away and having this incredible experience. And, and, you know, it's an, it's an amazing thing. You don't have to know intellectually right. uh, what the chants mean. It's not a, it's, an intellectual process. Right. It's a heart. It's a heartfelt process. Right. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's you know, really um, with our music, um, you know, we've, we've been touring and putting out concerts and all of these things and sometimes people ask yeah so when are you when are you going to go mainstream and (laughs) i say no way you know the mainstream's coming to us (laughs) and and you know it really is in so many ways um because it's it's about vibration it's about positive vibration and at the end of the day that's all anyone wants and uh you know it's it's happening slowly but surely with these chants, Eastern chants, you know, from the Sikh tradition and other traditions are becoming, um, the mainstream is coming. <laughs> yeah. And so for those of you out there who maybe don't even know what, what do you mean vibration? You know, it's a, for some people that's a stretch. Yeah. And so we could, why don't we step backwards and it's, how about as simple as how are you feeling today? Are you feeling Okay. You know, what's going on inside of you? Mm -hmm. Do you need some help? Here's some sacred words given to us from the ancestors that if you use them, learn this chant, practice it, it's going to help you feel better. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're trying to do because when we feel better, we treat each other better. Mm -hmm. We treat the world around us more kind. And so what do we got to lose? You know, mm-hmm. the path we're on isn't working. So I say to everybody, why you keep going down it? Let's mm-hmm. do something different. Mm-hmm. And so for some of you tonight, maybe you've never chanted before, but I think what we're going to do right now is uh, Sanatam's going to teach us a chant and let's see if all of you can loosen that tie and loosen your belt and let's go into the chanting world. Uh, this is David Kukula at KPFA uh, at the Traditional Healers uh, Forum from the Four Corners of the World. We're coming to you live from the mothership. This is a live call-in show, 510-848-4425. And now Sanatam Kar is going to be leading us into a chant.
beautiful and uh, this is the traditional healers from the four corners of the world here at the mothership in Berkeley California KPFA 94.1 FM this is a live show phone numbers 510-848-4425 call in and uh, at the uh, end of the show uh, we'll be answering as many phone calls as we can because we're here to serve you. And uh, we've been listening to some lovely chants tonight. We've uh, talked a little earlier about the meaning of the seek and the secret practice the, and chanting, the meaning of chanting, uh, if we can define it. And so then you said to me when we were talking that you wanted to teach a chant tonight. Mm -hmm. And I went, geez, how brave. <laughs> <laughs> and so should we go in that direction right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I, uh, I went to school, Mills College, and um, lived here in Berkeley for for some time so i listened to kpfa and i love this radio station so it's really fun to be on and um this chant it, that we just did rama dasa sase sohang is um is the healing chant that uh the story that i just talked about with the the veteran of the Iraq war who is able to finally cry when hearing this chant, who was able to, oh, you know, open his heart. And, um, this chant is, was one that we do, um, in our practice, uh, when somebody needs healing. Uh, there's a, there's a baby in our community named Olympia and, um, and I, Tonight, I'd like to dedicate the energy of this chant to her. She's needing healing. And so you can do this for anyone that you want to send healing to. And then also as you chant it yourself, um, the vibration of the chant passes through your being, through your body. And so you get healing as well. On, and, and you can do it for an entire country. You can do it for a place. You can do it for the planet. And the the um, the way to really do it is just set the intention and feel that vibration in your heart of who you're praying for. And the meaning of the chant Ra is the energy of the sun. Ma is the energy of the moon. Da is the energy of the earth. Sa is infinity. Sa se so hung unto infinity in every cell and fiber. Let there be healing. So Rama Dasa. Sa se so hung, and um, this chant is available, um, you know, on my website, uh, and uh, just for people to know, sanatamkar dot com, s n a t a m k a u r dot com, uh, with the album Grace. Um, but 
in any case, hopefully people will just learn it from tonight and they, you know, can, can take it. But if people need to look at the words, you can look at it that way and find out the words that way. So Rama Dasa Sase Sohang. And when we chant, we, we uh, sit and uh, sit down. Um, if you're sitting on a chair, you put both feet on the ground because you want to have your spinal column balanced. <laughs> or if you can sit in easy pose, in yogic style, kind of Indian pose, that so you just want to have your spine straight because the energy of the chanting works with the energy of the spine. Maybe explain <laughs> easy pose. Easy pose. They say we say in our kids yoga class, um, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> You're sitting uh, with your legs crossed and uh, um, spine straight, and um, and then you want to kind of just tuck your chin in a little bit so you have that straight line from the base of the spine to the top of your head. And with this chant, it has a posture that I'm putting out there to the listeners out there to give it a shot. You don't want to be driving <laughs> <laughs> and doing the posture. If you're driving, you know, chant along with us, but, um, you know, posture you don't want to do. If you're in a safe place. If you're in a safe place, do the posture. You have both palms facing up towards the sky and your forearms are tucked into the rib cage. And... Um, and as you chant in your heart center for whoever you want to send healing to, you hold the intention of that healing for that person at your heart center. Why does the spine need to be straight? I know it's always, they always accentuate a straight spine. What's the importance of that? Well, the spine is the, in um, Chinese medicine, we talk about meridian channels and points and all of those things and in yoga we have the chakra system which are energy centers that that go that like a are strung along the spine so to speak mm -hmm. so you and, and at each chakra all of these meridian meridian points gather mm -hmm. and they're they're basically concentrated energy centers of your meridian channels and so uh, these are all of the energy channels, subtle energy channels moving through your entire body. So they all meet at the spine. So you want to affect your entire being, affect your spine, because that all of the meridians meet there. So the energy moves more easily when the spine's straight. Exactly. And, and with the chance, what happens is... When you practice, when you practice yoga in conjunction with the chants, which is, which is part of our practice, you're able to clear the energy within your body and neutralize the energy of, at your lower spine mm -hmm. and come to a zero point. And this is part of the spiritual path too, of walking in a neutral way, of living in a neutral way. Um, but through Meaning living in a neutral wave. I yeah. know I'd get rear-ended if I put it in neutral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meaning being able to maybe walk the walk, find the center of every situation, being in your center in mm -hmm. every in every moment, mm -hmm. and and so through the practice of yoga and meditation, we work on that capacity, and through the combination of yoga and chanting, when you reach that center point within yourself, then the energy of the chanting can rise up through the spine. And so when you're centered, that's probably the place where you are at your best. Yes. It's yes. Strongest, most clear. Yes. Instead of reacting to a situation, you can respond mm -hmm. uh, from a firm but loving kind way right right uh defend versus attack right yeah so the center being a really important place place yes martial arts same thing right right exactly so yeah. we with the sacred chanting we have to be at our center okay. um from the very beginning so from that's the, the starting point that's the starting point 
put your can uh, I know in some of the breathing techniques they have you put your hands just a little bit below your navel as your center point is that the same center point in the kundalini or is it different yes we have we call it the third the third chakra mm-hmm. and this is the place of the our capacity to be courageous mm. our capacity to really mm. um, the element is fire oh, okay. you know so and, though for those who need a little more courage in their life mm-hmm. this is a way to feed yourself feed your body that energy through a chant feed your body that uh, those sacred words and let it respond with courage. Let it be a natural, organic process. Right, and the and the sacred chants work with with all of the energy centers that run mm-hmm. along the spine. So you have the courage that's at your navel center. Mm. Um, you you have your heart center that's compassion. You have your throat center that's the capacity to communicate. Your third eye that's the capacity to be intuitive. Um, the third eye is the point between the eyebrows Mm -hmm. and then the crown chakra the top of your head is is your capacity to live in royalty to feel your connection with the divine at all times Mm -hmm. so these sacred chants work with all of those energy centers to rejuvenate them revive them to give them life and and to um, nourish them um, Mm -hmm. just within the chanting itself Mm -hmm. (laughs) Huh? <laughs> don't you why, want to do why it not? now <laughs> did i do a good sales job? i think so i said where, where, can i buy a few yeah <laughs> so well, can, how are we gonna how are we gonna <laughs> teach us do you want to spell this chant out and then we'll, we'll all go back into it so yeah does everybody have a, a, a pen and a piece of paper there get your pens or get sharpen your, pens your pencils ready. yeah we're That's gonna right. spell it Yep. So even my little granddaughter Isabella, she can write it down. And when Grandpa <laughs> comes home tonight, he's going to look at how good she did, <laughs> and she can chant it for me. <laughs> and so, okay, you ready? That's Here right. we go. So go okay. ahead, uh, Sanatam okay. Kaur. This is uh, the traditional healer from the four corners of the world at the mothership here in Berkeley, California, uh, right. KPFA. Uh, we're uh, learning about some traditional medicine that originated in India and uh, is now uh, here in America by many people here on the West Coast. I know there's a lot of Sikhs here practicing in the Bay Area. Also down, uh, now you're down in uh, the Santa Cruz area. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've come to that place uh, of the show where uh, Sanatam's teaching us how to chant. (laughs) <laughs> and feed our souls, give us some good food. <laughs> yeah. So here's the chant. She's going to spell it out for us. Yeah, here's the chant. This is the first time I've ever done this before. <laughs> Love it. So Ra, R-A, Ra is the energy of the sun. You're calling, f- you are, re- you're calling forth the energy of the sun into your being. Ma, M-A, the energy of the moon. Calling forth the energy of the moon. Da, the earth, being grounded. D-A, um, connecting with the earth, calling forth the energy of the earth. Rama, Da, Sa, S-A, infinity. Feeling within yourself that anything is possible. Feeling for whoever needs healing that anything is possible. Why not ask for the miracle, right? Sa. And then again, we say Sa. Again, we say infinity, S-A. Why not repeat it again? Say so hung S A Y say so S O hung H U N G hung and when you say the hung you want to pull in the navel a bit and bring because the hung is what really pulls in the energy of the chant into your being and it's like the period it says yeah I really meant this and it's coming and I'm feeling it so yeah we will chant it with everyone now and I invite you to bring your palms up facing towards the sky yeah we're getting there we're positioning ourselves Uh, we're all trying to sit up real straight here down at uh, 
radio station and we're struggling a little bit. Maybe you're struggling at home a little bit too, but we're all going to get there. So here we go. We're, uh, we're going to do that uh, sacred, uh, this is a chant from Sanatum Kaur. Ramada sa sa se so hang This is David Kukla on the traditional healers from the four corners of the world. You were just listening to a chant by Snatam Kaur. He's been with us this evening talking about the healing powers of chant. And we're going to now move into another realm that she does also on a very regular basis, yoga, kundalini yoga. And um, it seems like wherever you go these days, there's yoga, little lo yoga studios everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I know there's a strong tradition uh, 
in yoga and that uh, I'm just sort of wondering Sanatana if you know what is the traditional practice of yoga and uh, how what is kundalini yoga um, how are the modern day practices different or are they different uh, which, what's your experience in that well, I've I've grown up with Kundalini yoga, Kundalini. Sometimes, sometimes people think it's a kind of a pasta. <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti sauce. Kundalini. Um, <laughs> Got to make a few jokes on the air, right? It's terrible. <laughs> I think so. Huh? Hang right. loose, right? Hang loose. Um, yeah, Kundalini yoga is is. Uh, it actually means the lock of the beloved, the curl of the beloved. Mm. And um, it's the gentle, gentleness of that. Um, and it's, it's really a, about the energy that rises from the base of the spine to the top of the head. When we have a kundalini awakening, it's really about our consciousness awakening and becoming awake and aware to the possibilities of life. And it's... Um, the practice of kundalini yoga is thousands of years old. Uh, yogis meditated in the mountains and observed animals and nature and themselves and developed these very specific scientific mm -hmm. techniques that were passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. Uh, in the form of kundalini yoga, it was done just one master to one student. Mm -hmm. and our, the old way. The old way. And our master, Yogi Bhajan, said, this has got to be for the masses because mm. he experienced such a deep healing himself. Mm. And um, so Kundalini Yoga uh, is really about tapping into healing, but it's, and it's a physical, there's a physical aspect where you're doing physical yoga postures. There's a lot of breath work, long, deep breathing, a breath of fire, rapid breath, um, there's mm -hmm. chanting, tons and tons of music, and there's also the quietness, meditation, and the stillness as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it encompasses a lot in its um, practice. And then as I was talking before, um, there's kundalini yoga, especially for women, mm -hmm. for men, mm -hmm. uh, for children, uh, for everything um, to me uh, about life. I, you know, to me, I'm a, um, head over heels in love with the Kundalini yoga <laughs> um, practice. I, you know, every morning I practice about mm. thirty to forty-five minutes in the morning, mm. um, and it just gets me in tune. You know, loosens my spine and a flow, and practice long, deep breathing in the morning, and it changes your energy. You know, it's how you feel. <laughs> I feel great. I, I feel, mean, you might wake up grumpy, and then by yeah. the time you're done, you're going, "Geez, life's good." That's right. That's <laughs> right. And when you miss a day, that's you know awful, but because uh -huh. you have this such a you know sense of enjoyment of your being of yourself, you know. A lot of people say, "Well, I just want to, I just want to, you know, somebody just give me a pill, a magic pill, you mm -hmm. know, and I want to all my problems to go away or whatever." Mm -hmm. And Kundalini Yoga is really about. Yeah, all of your problems will go away, but let's begin a daily practice. Let's start, mm -hmm. you know, with a daily practice. And mm -hmm. and that's really, you know, I encourage anyone out there, I don't care if you're kundalini yoga, this yoga, that yoga, or no yoga or whatever, but begin to bring in the sacred meaning, every day. Meaning... Tap into your spiritual path, tap into your light, tap into do something, play piano, you know, do something that taps you into your soul every day on a regular basis, create a rhythm for yourself and that will, that will change your life. Um, so when you say tap into your soul, something that makes you feel good. Yeah, exactly. And Is something that makes, if it's putting some salt and pepper on those eggs... <laughs> Put that salt and pepper on. Shoot. Well, I don't know if I said that. 
<laughs> I'm stretching it. You kind of, yeah, you're stretching it a little bit. You know, something yeah, that's going to like. I have a tendency have, to do that. Yeah, something's going to have a real positive effect. Although I do pepper and salt's good, but yeah, something that's going to have a positive effect on you, you know, do it, start doing it. Mm-hmm. And the, the. You mentioned awakening. Yeah. The awakening of this kundalini energy now i know there's some people out there going what What? is that girl (laughs) talking about (laughs) and why would i want to do that (laughs) right especially a lot of my brothers up in montana yeah yeah (laughs) well you know um, can you break it down i'm gonna try to sort of tough yeah you know maybe maybe it's not no it's not because if you look if you look at a child right? Their energy is clear, right? They're, they're, they're happy. They're in a place of innocence. Playful. Playful. Their, their kundalini is in full alignment. They're, they're awakened to the divine. Mm. And as adults, Mm -hmm. as we grow older, we naturally lose that ability. Mm -hmm. So this, my experience, it declines. So, but in my experience with this Kundalini yoga practice, you can retain that sense of innocence, that sense of flexibility, we'll say, um, through these practices. Um, and you so don't it's a primal energy. It's sort of an energy you're born with. Right. That sort of gets covered up by all the stuff that's fed us into us but through school and culture and TV and everything just sort of puts a little damper on it. So yeah. that by the time you're 20, you're just going, give me some drugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And then people's spines say it all. It's like uh-huh. going down, going down, going down. You know, the how some how somebody's posture is, is, is a complete illustration of their kundalini, their energy, their life force. Mm-hmm. So if, but the idea is that as you get older, you get, you can get more connected. You can get more flexible. You can retain that innocence. Even if you lost it, you can get back to it. And that's the beauty of these practices that, you know, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, what you've done, you can start over and you can, you know, turn a new page. I mean, you have to do the practice every day. Like I said, I practice Kundalini yoga myself 30 to 40 minutes a day um, and do it, you know, but, and I, and I feel so, so much gratitude to have mm-hmm. these practices. Uh, so it's really, it's really the energy of the spine. It all goes back to the spine. Mm-hmm. And the more that you give to your spine, the more you nourish your spine, the more it's going to nourish you and serve you and keep you connected to the divine. And in the spiritual practice, it's all in the spine. It is mm-hmm. all your connection with the divine is in your spine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that rhymes. <laughs> and so... Uh, kundalini yoga and chanting. Yeah. So are they separate? Are they the perfect match? Are they the perfect partners? Yeah, it's like it's like strawberry and whipped cream. Oh man, yeah. give me some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the best. You know, the two work beautifully together because through the yoga you can. Um, bring circulation to your entire body. You can open up all your your energy in your body. And through the chanting, they say, the yogis say, the ancient ones say, that you you are pulling the energy of the heavens to the earth, into mm-hmm. your body. So through yoga, you've you know prepared your body, you've opened up all the energy centers, and mm-hmm. then the chanting brings that divine sweetness Mm. into your being and and the experience is is amazing it's beautiful so the chanting sort of brings the honey into the body feed, feeds it that right. which you opened up through the yoga that's right that's right and and you you know people experience after a kundalini yoga class because kundalini has all always incorporates chanting experience this like 
uh, upliftment, happiness, seeing yeah. clearly, seeing into somebody's eyes finally after weeks and weeks of not being able to, you know, look straight, you know, mm-hmm. but doing the practice and then oh, finally being able to be in your center again mm-hmm. because you've released. A lot of the Kundalini Yoga r- works with releasing dramas and traumas and and energies. And... Um I always talk about uh, on my shows the the sacred circle, the body, mind, heart, spirit connection, and uh, a lot of the healing work I've done, I call it mending the sacred hoops, and so that uh, when we work with people, we want to address that whole being. We're not just saying, go get on a spiritual high. We're not saying... Uh, just eat some uh, organic foods and ignore the rest. But we want we want this circle to be balanced. We want this circle to be not only body, mind, heart, spirit, but also connected to our family and community. So there's a lot of overlapping of these sacred hoops. Uh, this kundalini yoga and chanting... Is there this body, mind, heart, spirit connection that you've ex- that you've witnessed? Or could you speak just a little bit about that? Yes, yes. When I'm when I'm chanting, and I'll speak to my own personal experience, mm-hmm. um, I um, experience uh, a, a really deep sense of healing uh, within myself, and uh, I put myself completely into the chanting experience and the uh when i do this that's when that's when the real things start happening and oftentimes i'll um experience myself crying in the middle of a chant uh, because something within me is is healing and god only knows what it is um and and uh Usually I do know what it is, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's just mm-hmm. things needing to get released. Uh-huh. And and it's, um, you know, a, a deep experience, mm-hmm. you know, and deeply personal for each person um, when they're chanting, what they're connecting to and what they're healing um, mm-hmm. within that experience of mm-hmm. chanting. So there's, in this healing experience, it, it's probably... One, to let go consciously of those things, those people, those situations that you know you need to let go of. But I think you were also speaking about the invisible, that that which is living within us that is coming out in a a natural way through the spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And so that the body uh, uh, has this inner desire to be complete here, to be whole. Mm -hmm. Is that how you see it? Exactly, yes. And also the chanting creates uh, a protective force field, uh, creates an energy around us that that naturally just protects us. We walk out the door into our lives. We have this natural energy protection around us through the sacred chanting. It shifts the energy so that it's as if your life unfolds before you through the grace of the chanting and and life has a flow and 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 i i do really believe in these chants that they do that sort of reminds me of uh please god show me the way exactly yeah and so with that this is david kukla speaking with sanatam kaur having a beautiful evening here and some chanting uh this is uh, the traditional healers from the four corners of the world on KPFA 94.1 FM, uh, stream kpfa.org. And now we're going to bring you a very, very special chant by Prabhupnam Kaur. Oh, 
सतनाम सतनाम जी सतनाम 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 जी सतनाम 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 जी सतनाम 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 जी वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु जी वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु जी वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे traditional healers from the four corners of the world and we just heard a beautiful chant by Prabhu Nam Kaur Sanatam Kaur's mother what a pleasure to have her here 
You got quite a teacher there, Sonata. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, here we're going to spend a few more minutes just talking, and then uh, we're going to take some phone calls. Um, I'd like to, uh, before we do that, I'd like to spend a couple minutes talking about discipline and the importance of practicing every day. Do you need a teacher, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these practices are just, you know, teacher-driven and all, most of all of our old traditional healing practices, you know, you, you had a teacher. You know, I know I've had, that's how I learned. I didn't learn it. You learn how to add in school, but you really know how or learn how to live when you have a teacher. You need to, you can learn how to apply it, how it works. How can you do it in the absence of a teacher? Mm, yeah, you know the uh, in our tradition we have a phrase Guru Prasad, Guru Prasad, and it means the grace by the grace of the Guru. And Guru is essentially teacher. It's that one who brings you from from lack of consciousness, which is gu, and then into consciousness, which is ru, guru. And yes, uh, you know, the having this touch, having this uh, an enlightened being uh, reach out and give you uh, the uh, assistance and give you the teachings and give you the capacity to really connect is is key uh, and it doesn't matter you know what your tradition is uh, but having this this grace um, you know and in our tradition in the Sikh tradition our guru our divine teacher is is actually lives within the sound current and in the Sikh meaning <laughs> in the Sikh tradition, all, all of this chants that we do are are uh, in in the sacred writings text called the City Guru Granth Sahib, and the it's teachings have been passed down. The teachings have been passed down through this through sacred poems and poetry. The oral tradition, exactly. So this. For one thousand four hundred and thirty pages, and we we take a sacred reading and and get guidance for life, death, whatever, uh, and that that that's what we take our guidance from, and that is our guru, and that's the light that we reach towards. And I see this in in so many traditions, and believe in it because it's you know through as human beings we live on this earth. Um, but we're spiritual beings first and these sacred teachings from all walks of life give us the capacity to connect with the light, that same light that our ancestors were so perfectly connected to. Mm. And there's a power in that, you know, kind of, um, if we forget our ancient ways, then we will not have no way to, to move forward. Mm. Uh, so being connected and, and reaching for the teacher I think is is right. important. So find a good teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then the practice. You've been talking tonight about it needing the benefits of a daily practice. Reminds me of uh, when I was working with Bruce Elijah, Oneida clan of the Aragoy Confederation. And he would always say in our circles, how many of you have greeted the morning sun today mm -hmm. how many of you greeted the the sunset today mm -hmm. how many of you do that when you go home when we leave here and i'm not telling you to do it and mm -hmm. so again that need to discipline ourselves to practice these teachings that have been passed down because it's the teachings that have been passed down to us creates our culture that is culture Mm -hmm. And that's how, how it thrives. That's how it sustains itself. Mm -hmm. And so that we, it's almost on a certain level, our duty, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. to, to greet that sunrise, mm -hmm. to practice this kundalini yoga that's been passed down. Mm -hmm. It's a way of preserving, maintaining, and furthering it. Yes, and, and you know, we... Uh, we have to prioritize our lives to live in the way that we 
we want to be. So if you want to be connected with your spirit, you want to be connected with your heart, you want to be living in a place of courage and strength where you have to do things every day that bring you to that place. And we so often say, well, you know, um, I'll let my spiritual practice slide today. I've got to do so many things or I've got to go here. I've got to go there. And we live like slaves in the car and the work and the, this life, this lifestyle of modern day is very stressful. And if we live, it grinds on you. So with a spiritual practice, you, you take yourself out of the grind and, and you connect with the spirit, you uplift yourself. Um, and it's important to do it every day. Well, thank you for those words of wisdom, little sister. (laughs) And now, uh, we're going to, uh, be taking a short music break. Uh, this is David Kukla at the Traditional Healers from the Four Corners of the World here at the Mothership KPFA 94.1, Berkeley, California. When we come back in just a minute, we're going to be taking your phone calls, 510-848-4425, 510-848-4425. Welcome back. This is David Kukla, the traditional healers from the four corners of the world here at KPFA 94.1 FM. Uh, we have special guest Natam Kaur with us this evening talking about the sacredness of chant, yoga, and meditation and how it can help heal you, how, how it can make a, a better life for you here. And and we got Hank on the line. Uh, welcome to the Sacred Circle, Hank. Uh, thank you. You know, I'm sitting here in my car. You two have brought me home. More ways than one this evening. And uh, Well, actually, I, this might be quite a miracle with trying to do this in those postures. No, I wasn't doing that while driving. But I wanted to thank you so much. Uh, I found some good teachers tonight. Oh, you're welcome, and, Hank. Thank and, you for calling in. And I'd just like to add also, as a reminder for all of us, which of course, it's not just uh, for us 
uh, this discipline and this practice and chants and song and letting our being sing, but for those around us and especially for our children. That's right. For us to be good examples. Yes, we're, we're and, doing it for our children, Hank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we so we don't if if we sing and share the joy and they see our good example instead of us just being in our grind. And yeah. Anyway, you've you brought that to me. I'm taking that into yeah. my family yeah. now. Thank you, and okay. I look forward to tuning in next week. Sing on your way home, brother. Thanks for calling. Ruby, welcome, Ruby, Hi. to the Sacred Circle. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoyed the program t uh, tonight, and um, I'm glad that I, I listened in, um, taking a lot from it. And um, I actually just went to a yoga class this morning, <laughs> coincidentally. Um, but um, I had a great day because of doing that, um, and, and I think the chanting is going to help me even that much more. So um, I just wanted to thank you and your your guest. I, I can't pronounce her name. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's all right, Ruby. Thanks. This is Sanatam, and I'm really happy to hear you. You dove in and took that yoga class today. Right on. Yeah. Um, where Where are you located? I'm just curious. Um, you, you talked about the temple and and um, everything. I'm just wondering. Here you're I live in uh, Santa Cruz, um, and um, my website is uh, sanatamkar.com, S-N-A-T-A-M-K-A-U-R.com, and we have a number of local events coming up, uh, actually a workshop July 19th through the 21st, uh, where we'll really dive into one chant uh, in particular for healing and miracles. So, um, and then my mom lives in, um, in San Leandro and has a number of local things if Santa Cruz is too far for you. And she's at the, you can reach her through her website, satsantok.com, S-A-T-S-A-N-T-O-K-H.com. Uh, but we, we have a number of, we're, we're locals, we, we live here. And uh, so we have a number of things going on. Okay, thank you, Ruby. See you soon. Obea, this is David. Welcome to the Sacred Circle. I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, David, Obea. Obea, welcome, Obea. I give thanks and praise to you. Please, uh, Obea, this is David. Welcome to the Sacred Circle. on your radio, please. David, thank you so much. I can't hear you. I just said... Turn, Obea, turn down your radio, please. Give thanks and praise it. Uh, just listen to your profound statement oh. and knowledge that uh, come up with a good chance for for the world and for the people mind because out here in this country here yeah, there's so much stress as what you just mentioned earlier and so much pollution and deceiving and and right now people most of like most of them have lost their mind because so much vanity and vanity out here to where they're not listening to what spiritual gifts is all about pretty much. You know, the church is going backwards. But most everybody's going backwards pretty much except the real people most high. Yeah, and well, thank I, you very much for calling in and, uh, you know, stay on that high road and keep seeing the goodness in life. Thank you. This is uh, David Kukula at the Traditional Healers Forum from the Four Corners of the World on KPFA. Mamadou, you're on. Come on into the Sacred Circle. Oh, okay. I am, you said? Yeah, turn your radio down. Uh, you know, oh, okay. 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 Hello? Yes, that's better. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, this is Mamadou. I said, Dev, I want to talk to Dev. Dez, there is no Dez. Uh, I mean, the show right now is, is on the radio. Uh, it's Sanatam, Sanatam Carr. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hi, how are you? Good, how are you this evening? Good, good, good. This is Mama Do. I really, really appreciate the show tonight. 
Oh, wonderful. Um, Thanks for joining it, us. It was amazing. I wanted to be so I, went, so I was waiting for that. I think uh, I heard David Kwakwa last um, a couple of months ago. Something yeah, coming, thank you. So, and then I definitely appreciate the show, you know? Okay, well, thank you for calling in and yeah. keep spreading the good word, eh? Uh, we want to remind you that uh, there's going to be uh, March 16th, the Curculo Cultural Mission Cultural Center is going to present Viva la Vida, Te Tron Español at 2868 Mission Street, San Francisco, California. Also, phone number 415-821-1155. Glenn, this is David. Welcome to the Sacred Circle. Hey, David. Thanks for taking my phone call. Yes, and I'll tell you, what a pleasure to hear you today. I have been to a couple of your concerts in the past few years, and I never knew you were local. <laughs> and, uh, so nice to be able to go to some of your events, and I live in San Leandro myself. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, my question I have for you, you know, you've been doing this your whole life. Um, I'd like to hear, hear your comments about how you feel about the curtains of chanting being so popular. You know, we have the Bhakti Fest, we have Christian Das on the Grammys. Yeah. So how do you feel about that these days? Yeah, well, it's it's the time. You know, it's time for the uh, the light of these chants to get out there. And uh, not everybody is perfect, but the light of the chants, I believe, will take care of it, including myself, you know, in, in how we bring sacred tradition out. Um, but I have a, a very strong faith in the power in these sacred chants to correct any uh, anything and to keep things sacred. Thank, yeah, thank you for calling. We have to move on. to The phone's ringing off the hook here. Sorry to have to cut it sort of short. Leif, you're on the line. Hello. Hello, this is David. Welcome to the Sacred Circle. Oh, um, hi. Um, I was, um, your, your guest had said about that you had, and a, it's pretty obvious, I guess, that you need to do it every day, that the yoga that she does in order to feel what she was feeling. And um, I really think it's in, that's important if, you, if you're under stress or whatever, even if you're not, that most of what you uh most of the time that you're here should try to be being connected rather than a smaller part of the time and um i recently have been doing uh transcendental meditation and i just started uh, in the morning and now i'm doing it fairly continuously and it's just um really working for me very well mm -hmm. and um well thank you for that and, and I, uh, keep listening to our show and uh go check out uh sanatam car's uh website you can see some of her coming up coming events and uh please uh sign up and come have some fun so we have uh joseph on the line hi thanks for taking my call You're i welcome. have a Kind of a five dollar question, and hope it's not offensive to to you at all. But I was wondering about the the Sikh um, uh, tendency to wear a knife at all times, and specifically, uh, you know, I know that it's important to honor the the heritage that brought the tradition down through the centuries. But I was wondering if, in light of this Aquarian age that we are entering, if um, the willingness to shed um, blood, even the blood of the guilty, will will be something that will will put in the past, and if that might be something that that will run its course in time. Uh, thank you for that question. We uh, we wear the kirpan, uh, as you're saying, and yes, that is that is correct, and and it is to always connect with the spirit and the heart first, uh, and on, and only to. Um, remain in that connection um, and not for any other purpose. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. We have to, we got to sign it off here, folks. Sorry, we're running out of time. We could probably go on all night. Uh, this is David Kukla on the traditional healers from the four corners of the world. Uh, we want to thank uh, Miguel Molina, our executive producer. We want to thank you, Pedro, our chief engineer, and all of our guests who came in here tonight in support of Snotum Car. Thank you, Clay Schmitz, for the video work that you've done. Uh, our next show is April 19th, uh, airs from 8 to 10 with a conversation about food as medicine with Lana Farson, a licensed acupuncturist in Lafayette and practitioner of Chinese medicine. And uh, uh, please go to your website, Sanatamkar.com, S-N-A-T-A-M-K-A-U-R.com. We have a workshop coming up local here. July 19th through the 21st to realign with the light. Thank you, everybody. Blessings to you and your families.